in conventional design of experiments, we model the response that is Y on controllable factors which we call Xs. We block the noise factors during experiments in DOE. But in Taguchi's designs, we model the response Y on controllable factors and noise both. This is what leads to a robust process centered at the target with minimal influence of variation on the factors as well as response. Now that we have a high level idea on Taguchi's designs, before we dive deep into the methodology, it is important to understand when can we use this method. Now one of the significant advantages in this method is that it reduces the required number of experiments which obviously reduces the time and cost of experimentation. In the traditional design of experiments, if we have let's say six factors with two levels, we have to do uh, two to the power of six experiments. That is 64 and with uh, replicates, it will be 64 into two, that is 128 experiments. Even if we choose half fractional factorial design, we will end up doing 64 experiments with replicates whereas in Taguchi's methods we need only 8 experiments. The second most useful situation is when the noise factors have significant influence on the control factors and the process performance. In Taguchi's method the design is modeled on both controllable factors and the noise factors and hence will return a robust process. As a rule of thumb, the number of control factors should be greater than the number of noise factors as only then we will be in a position to locate a factor that will help reduce the noise. The other uh, very important aspect is when any deviation from the target will invite major tangible losses for the business, for the process, then we definitely need a robust design approach like Taguchi's method. Now in the set of uh, beliefs in Taguchi's designs, few can be seen as limitations about the approach. And as a practitioner, it is important to be aware about those limitations. Number one, this method doesn't believe in uh, randomization, so to say. The concept of lurking variable, which is an unknown variable that may impact the response, is handled by randomizing the experiment uh, in the traditional method. Aguchi feels that the users must be expert in their processes and all such lurking variables must be known beforehand. Number two, it believes that the user's experience and in-depth knowledge will help to identify the interactions and will help to choose the significant uh, interactions before we start the experiment. So this method must be only used when we have the subject matter experts who are willing to devote the required time on the project. This is very, very important. In some cases, it is not the optimal best we are after when it comes to the process output. Especially in a product scenario, at times, we want the output to vary in a controlled way when an input factor is changed. As an example, if we take the accelerator uh, pedal in a car, now in the car, we would want the rate of acceleration to be tied to how much we press the pedal. Now such a factor is called the signal factor. So here we are referring to the accelerator pedal in the car and the depression that is going to be put on that pedal. That forms the signal factor. And the response which is the rate of acceleration should be in proportion to this depression. So in such cases Taguchi's designs can be very useful. In practice, we see the application of Taguchi's method in two scenarios. One, uh, when we want to find the optimal levels for input factors 
that can provide us the best level of output response. Such a level would be a fixed level like in uh, a silicon wafer design we would want a process that precisely coats a specific thickness of silicon layer on the wafer. This scenario calls for a static response design. The second scenario like we discussed earlier, a case where we want to optimize the relationship between the output response and the signal factor. So here the response is not at a fixed level, but will have an optimum operating range within which it ought to be efficient. Like the rate of acceleration we spoke earlier, even uh, the brake performance and its uh, relation with how much the brake pedal is depressed is a similar case. So such scenarios call for a dynamic response design. We'll walk through each of this method in this tutorial. Now whether we adopt a static or a dynamic method, the Gucci's method goes through three stages. The systems design, the parameter design and the tolerance design. Systems design it is all about effectively defining the problem effectively defining the vital design factors and their levels. So this stage requires experts who have in-depth process and engineering knowledge. The parameter design, it's all about conducting the experiments and identifying the optimal settings for the design factors. Now ideally the design uh, work should get completed by the end of the previous stage that is the parameter design uh, stage but sometimes we would not be able to attain the target response quality after the parameter design then we need to determine tighter tolerances around the optimal factor settings that we have identified during the previous stage this is what happens in the tolerance design phase so on one side, it leads to a robust design in which the designed process delivers at the target and is least impacted by the variance or the noise factor. But on the other side, it increases the cost as practically, if we have to achieve the tighter tolerances, we need better product or the process components. 